art scene here in Miami has changed dramatically. We have over 50 major galleries now in Wynwood, the design district. You have you know, a vast number of international artists who now have their studios here. You have just a wonderful expanding museum project now with now the $200 million project. So, and obviously through Art Basel, Main Basel, you have a whole world of gain at the art scene here. So this was a very unique blend of bringing both the best of Miami plus 30 international dealers. I'm really pleased with the reaction of the public and the galleries and uh, the great opportunity to work in Miami. Uh, this is after Basel, is the second most important fair in Miami, Miami Beach. And I'm really proud because I'm a museum curator, an art dealer for 17 years, and now I got to organize the art fair. So I was able to integrate art, you know, how meaningful art is, disregarding the business of art. What I'm most attracted to is the idea of, of presenting work in public that's accessible to all ages and has a kind of impact that you could only get in that circumstance. Well, the ice, I, I guess, if you can imagine yourself, you're, you're in an airplane, you're flying over the Arctic Ocean, all right? At a certain point, you're going to see huge masses of ice that have broken up, that were once all connected as one sheet. They break up and they start to move in the water as they move further south. And they create these fantastic patterns that are constantly changing and constantly moving. Uh, you can see the connection with this work in the sense that it's also meant to float across water. The ice is an ephemeral kind of work. At the end of it, I, there's nothing left for me. I don't have any paintings to show. So it's very interesting for me now to have work that I kind of envision it being in the water first as a public installation, and then choosing pieces that have been affected somewhat by that water, choosing them to go on a wall to be finished paintings. The next step is that we're going to take this particular work, Lotus in Motion, to Chicago in 2012. So we may have like 150 to 200 of these floating pieces. Um, throughout this lake. I was born in the States, but I was raised in Korea, and I studied in the States. I'm interested in uh, the notion of home and like something that is unreal, beyond the reality, more fantastical. Uh, the medium I use is a Korean traditional fabric that is used to make Korean traditional clothing, but I'm um, interpreting it more into a, more of a contemporary style. Cut out by hand um, like these thousand pieces of fabric, and the shapes are footstep shapes. So thousands of footsteps are making a wing, and yeah, the wings are blooming and flying into the air. is to work inside the materials to go and groove and leave the soul there. These are all groove works. All they were all and engraved and these were done in wood and then printed. The moment, this moment of your soul, of your perspiration is very intimate. You know, doing engraving is not doing painting, it's not drawing. It's something more. The Miami Fair is, is a special experience because it goes out of that common place of institutions, you know, museums and that, and galleries. It's something that people go through in a different posture and they discover things and we discover each other. It's, it's a very oxygenated situation.
interesting about co Korean traditional costume, especially woman style. But this one is very traditional Korean uh, jacket. I try to uh, uh, fabric uh, texture. I found it, this mulberry paper. This is so strong and the color is very pure. I started uh, wherever art and I made a sculpture. This one inspiration for peace and uh, people uh, making, you know, making happiness. My project, which is called Transformation, it consists of a few um, a few components. Uh, first component is uh, oil uh, oil painting. First started in the studio, the studio experience, one-on-one uh, -on -one with the model, and I would put a model which uh, served as a muse in front of the painting, and then body painter into the same uh, forms and shapes as the painting in the back. So she would become one with the painting, kind of merged and. Uh, uh, fused and kind of a life extension of a painting. Then we start editing video to it. I don't look for qualities. I always uh, follow my instinct. And I, I have this say that if I gasp for air when I look at a painting, I don't need to know the name of the artist, if he's famous or not, that's it. That's what's the only reason that I need to be caught in this suddenly passion for their art and then I start working with them. This is a fantastic piece of uh, Daniel Gonzalez, an artist from Argentina, but actually he lives in Berlin. And what is uh, incredible about his work, that is always based in these images done with sequence, uh, and they could be very whimsical, like these ones uh, resembling uh, graffiti on a wall or, or very, very um, almost monochrome. And I specialize, because that's what I really I feel very strong about it, is promote young artists. To give them a, a platform, an opportunity, you know, to be seen and known. related to the space and changes in the cities and territories. So as an architect, it was perfect for me to jump into the art world. I have always worked with uh, cartographies and maps to reveal changes in, in, in the earth and in different places. I'm more interested in doing works, artworks that uh, go to specific places or specific sites than just doing um, like, like paintings that, that you can hang everywhere. An investigation that I have been doing about the glaciers that are, are melting around the world. So I work with the maps of the glaciers, the real maps of the glaciers, um, and I do drawings with them. Uh, in this case, uh, I work with uh, sand, because when the glaciers melt, what is going to be left is sand, earth, and stones. Rafael Soriano is a Cuban exile who came to Miami in 1962. Soriano is a colorist. You can see the rich, luminous blues, and he's fascinated with how light can be transparent. And Soriano is combining that with a space that seems Cubist. So Soriano is one of the great last modern masters two pieces we also see the use of color complementary purples and yellows and forms that are abstract uh, and suggest the idea of a dreamscape. Bandy Trazos and the Berkelian are working on a project that's called West Encounters East. This is exploring the impact of Asian art on Latin American contemporary art 
and one of the first cultures that we're examining is how J Japan has influenced Latin America. So with Guillermo Bueno, for instance, his grandparents came to Japan in the 1920s. Bueno was trained in Argentina and in Japan. Thank you.